Hi, I'm Charlie from CookingSecretsForMen.com, and we are continuing our series, Cooking with Milwaukee Community Leaders, and I'm very pleased to have as my guest today, Tariq Moody. Tariq? Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming out. So Tariq is the um, uh, program director at 88.9 Radio Milwaukee, which if we look out the window here, about uh, two blocks right over the river, uh, is, is very close. So um, uh, we'll, we'll get to... Um, 88.9 in just a minute, but I first, I, I would be remiss if I didn't say happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It was your birthday um, a couple days ago. Yeah, turned um, 50. Right. I was just going to say, I, you were <laughs> you were on the radio with Ann Christensen, and you told her how old you were, so <laughs> it's not a secret, yeah. so if you if you didn't want to tell people how young you were, that's right. So <laughs> it's, it was a milestone birthday. Uh, let's talk about your, your earlier You were born in Louisville. Yep, born in Louisville. Say that right. If you live in Cincinnati for 15 years, <laughs> you learn how to say Lowell. Um, uh, raised and uh, grew up in Atlanta. Mostly and then you, um, you went to college in mm -hmm. D.C., my hometown, mm -hmm. at Howard University. Mm -hmm. um, so talk about, and you got a degree in architecture, architecture yep. in 96. Yep, graduate in right. 96. Yeah. Graduate in 96. Um, so uh, talk a little bit about um, your, your growing up years, your formative years, up through college, and how that set the stage for next phase of your life yeah so yeah I, I spent I grew up mostly in Atlanta but I uh, as of Milwaukee I think this is my eighth or ninth city I lived in Wow so when I was born in Louisville I don't remember I think we moved when I was 18 months old went to Houston Texas for a couple of years then went to Atlanta uh, actually Stone Mountain to be exact uh -huh. um, lived there for years then went to Charleston South Carolina uh, and then moved back to Atlanta and then during that time, I graduated from high school and then I went to college while my parents still lived in Atlanta, so I went mm -hmm. to Howard. So I graduated high school in 91, a uh, place uh, right outside Atlanta, Marietta, East Cobb, I guess you call it. Sure. Um, where the stadium is now? Yeah. Okay. Where the stadium, unfortunately, is. I'm not too happy. Right. And, uh, that's, that's a lot of people there are not uh, happy of, of a team called Atlanta not being in Atlanta, but right. that's another story. Um, had my had, had a lot of fun. I didn't really have a lot of fun. I had some. Let's put it this way, I had some really great friends in high school. Mm -hmm. One of my closest friends, who I still have friends with now, he's he's Korean. Mm -hmm. um, Shouts to Ellis Lee. He got me probably before anybody even knew what kimchi was, and, <laughs> and like Korean barbecue. He got me hooked on all that kind uh -huh. of stuff, home cooking and all types of foods in Korean. And what you know during Atlanta. Um, there's a place called, not a place, but a street called Buford Highway. Okay. It's a long street, but part of it, large parts of it, there's a lot of international restaurants and markets, and it's a great place to go discover all types of great food. But during that time, there was a lot more, a lot of, a lot more Korean restaurants and uh -huh. places, and there was a place called the Buford's Farmer's Market, and it was like mostly Korean, but now it's like, like last time I went there, every aisle... It's like a different country. Uh huh. Yeah, there's nice. great seafood market and stuff. Um, also, during Atlanta, when I was there, I was, I was fond of drawing. Had my own cartoon comic book company called Chili Comics. Really? Um, this is in high school. This is high school, okay. middle school. Um, I love to cook. Um, my grandma, my parents got me interested in cooking. Never let me in the kitchen that much, but you know, I, the funny story they tell. So my parents, my first cooking episode, my brother who's um, unfortunately um, severely mentally challenged. He's older, he's mm -hmm. like a baby. Um, my parents wanted to watch, actually when they were running and watch my brother for a while, so I'm like, oh, it's my chance to cook something. So they said, we'll be back in 35 minutes or so. So I had this Pillsbury cookbook. You know, they, you look at it, and it has all the times, right. you know, how long it takes. So I found the one that had enough time, a little grace period, uh -huh. to make the dish and finish the dish before they got back. There were sugar cookies, so I made the sugar cookies and I burnt them royally, and I tried to cover the smell of uh, Lysol and Pine Sol, did not help. And uh, they caught me and kind of, you know, they didn't punish me, they kind of laughed. But, right. Yeah. But that was my first uh, episode in cooking. I, I mean, like, when I graduated high school, I was like, I was almost tempted to go to cooking school, but there was no, you know, chefs weren't hot like what they are now. Right. Like, there was no food network. There was PBS and Young Kind Cook and all that. But, you know, so I decided to go to architecture because like, I love science and math, I love drawing, and I figured the ladies would rather be hanging out with a, an architect with a turtleneck than some smelly chef at that time, so I went to... I think it might be reversed now. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely reversed now. Okay. Um, so you, um, 
you also were in the Army, U.S. Army Reserves yep. for about 14 years? Yeah, I got a scholarship, ROTC scholarship. I was in ROTC in high school. Okay. All four years, and, and you're still scholarship. you're still in it, or are you? No, I got out in 2009, in 2009, 2010. Okay, well, thank you for your service. Um, tell us uh, how that was. That was in 14 years. So, that it, does that include the college ROTC, or is that afterwards? That's afterwards, 14 okay. years afterwards. So, I didn't want my parents to pay for school. You know, if I messed up, then it's it's, it's on the government's dollar, not their dollar. Okay. I felt like the government would be more forgiving, and I don't feel as guilty <laughs> as the joke goes. Um, but my dad served in the Air Force, and I felt like, you know, that's something I feel like I should do. Okay. They paid away, so got the scholarship. Um, I didn't have to serve 14 years. I had to serve like eight years, so I stayed in a little longer. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the experience was, it was mostly reserves. I was signal, trained signal, so I went to school. When I got commissioned lieutenant, about a year, year and a half later, I went to Augusta, Georgia, at Fort Gordon, five and a half months training signal. Uh, unfortunately, in the reserves in a minute, and like the, the reserves and National Guard are different. Okay. Um, reserves are federal, National Guards are state, kind of run funded. Sure. Um, so when I was in Midwest, there was no signal units for the reserves. So I ended up being in uh, multiple different branches. Uh, I was a quartermaster unit, orders unit, um, and then uh, finally. Um, when I came here, I joined, uh, went, to, went to school for public affairs, mm-hmm. a unit in Chicago, and we were going to, I was supposed to be deployed, went through all the training, I went to Fort, Fort Meade for the public affairs, and I went to Fort Dix to be uh, deployed, but like a, about a day before we shipped out, they didn't let me go because I, I have a Crohn's disease, okay. and I kind of fought that because I was like, I wanted to go, I actually put my hand up to go. And, my Crohn's disease was in remission, so but they still didn't let me go. So uh, after college, you worked as an architect, yeah. uh, both in uh, Minneapolis and Detroit. Yep. And then somewhere along the line, um, you got involved in local radio. Yep. So uh, talk about that transition from architect to radio host. Yeah. So yeah, I studied architecture. Graduated in '96. Uh, when I graduated, I worked for NIH in their facilities department, National Institute of Health in Bethesda, yeah. Maryland. Yeah. Uh, then my friend who went, who went to Howard with me, he studied business, he was from Minnesota. He went back to Minnesota and a lot of all of our friends stayed here and he was busy trying to get everybody moved to Minnesota mm-hmm. and everybody said no <laughs> uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, and I said no many times and then he said, hey, there's an opportunity at Northwest Airlines, you get to fly for free, so you're not really in Minnesota and I'm like, oh, whatever, I'll just try it. Got the job, and then they actually, it was a Detroit to work in the terminal. So I worked on the airport terminal in Detroit, which is now Delta's terminal, because right. Northwest Airlines got bought up by Delta. Right. And then I got promoted and moved to Minneapolis, and then he decided to move to Phoenix. He <laughs> got us to move to Minnesota. We used to warm Phoenix to, to work for America West, and, uh, and I joke with him all about that. So, um, But when I moved to Minnesota, I had no family, no friends, mm-hmm. and I just like, and I was like, man, I should just leave. This is cold. It's I don't have no family, no friends. It's cold here. Then I happened to go on this blind date. I don't remember how I went on a blind date, and then she gave me tickets to a, sh- a hip hop show. Uh huh. The group called Atmosphere at uh, First Avenue, the Seventh Street entry beside one of the First Avenue, and in there I was like, oh, I didn't even know there's hip hop in Minnesota. And there was a table for a radio station volunteering, KFI. Uh-huh. And I was like, dude, so they had a place to volunteer. So I'm like, oh, this would be a cool thing to like meet people. It was like, my idea was not to be in radio or on radio. It's just like, I guess to be connected to the community. Right. So I signed up. And uh, the one person who was there was a woman named Jen Downham, who hosts a show called Groove Garden. And I, was, I started listening to her. I'm like, this is the perfect show. This is like what I love. And I begged her, like, can I be a co-host? She looked at me like, no. <laughs> Start at the top. I begged her. So I started volunteering. I said, like, they asked me, what do you want to do? Like, I'd love to be behind the scenes and be an engineer or whatever. And, like, we don't do that. You want to be on air? Like, no. I don't want to be on air. That's not, that's not what I do in this. Well, I think you'd be good. Like, you, you should, like, just try it. Like, we, so KFI has, like, news. And they asked me to read the news on Wednesday evenings at 6. Uh-huh. So I started doing that. Still bugged uh, Groove Garden host Jim Danum to be on. Eventually, she let me to be on and shadow her. And then eventually became co-host for many, many years. 
And then uh, got involved in doing a local music show called a local sound department for three other people. And then um, I don't know how long I was on KFI. It's probably like eight, nine years at least. Um, and then Minnesota Public Radio in 2005 was launching a new radio station called The Current. And people are like, hey, you should, you should try to get a show. And I was like, I'm too cool for school. I'm going to be a cool little radio station over here. I don't want to do that. And one of my DJ partners, like, we should do it. And I, so I wrote a whole thing of the idea of a show called Rhythm Lab Radio, uh -huh. which I still do to this day. It actually turns uh, 18 years old on Monday. Um, and I submitted the proposal and I got the show, which launched in July 31st in 2005. Uh -huh. And so I was doing that show weekly. In left, Minnesota? In Minnesota. Okay. Left. Still helped out on KFI on the local side. Um, but then I get this weird call, maybe, I don't know, it's probably six months later, seven months later, 2006, from somebody in Milwaukee saying, hey, we're doing this radio station. I heard your Rhythm Lab radio. Your show will be perfect. We'd love to talk to you about what we're trying to do, let your ideas. And I'm like, the first thing I said is like, Milwaukee. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay. That's not an uncommon uh, saying. <laughs> I mean, I know nothing. I mean, I mean, other than I drive through it from Detroit to Minnesota, I didn't really pay attention to it. Sure. Because I was just trying to just get, you know, get to Minnesota. I had, I, I honestly thought, like, it was a bunch of farmland and Milwaukee <laughs> cows. And, uh -huh. <laughs> I didn't know anything about it. And it was like, and I'm sitting in this call, I was like, hey, yeah, sure, free flight, why not? Okay, so they fly me out. Some of the people working the station, they're starting the station, gave me a tour, and I'm like, hey, there's a, there, you have a lake. <laughs> like somehow, I'm good at geography, but I guess I didn't, you know, you don't really think about Milwaukee, where it is. Right. And I'm like, you have a lake. <laughs> a big one. There's boats. <laughs> and, I'm like, and they show me all the nice parts of Milwaukee, and I'm like, this is cool. And we talked about my ideas, and they knew I was, somehow knew I was very digital savvy and stuff, and flew back. Thought nothing of it, and like two weeks later, the guy, one of the first exec directors, no longer there, said, hey, we want to offer you a job based on the conversation. And I was like, but Milwaukee? <laughs> like, I'm about to get my license for architecture. I have a girlfriend. I'm like, the music scene, I know the music scene. I'm involved in the music scene. Like, I'm ingrained in Minneapolis, right. right? Culturally and professionally. And I'm like... I don't know nothing about Milwaukee, you know, like, you know and, I, and I was about to say no until I talked to my dad. He said, you know, if you don't do this, you might regret it. You can always come back and do something. So, 16 and a half years later, here I am. Great. Basically. You've been here at uh, 88.9 Radio, mm -hmm. 88.9 Radio Milwaukee. Um, well, actually, real quick, it's, it's sure. we had a, we call it a brand extension. Okay. So, the company is now just Radio Milwaukee. Okay. And under Radio Milwaukee, there's 88.9, the station uh -huh. you know. Right. Hyphen. Okay. And 414 Music. Okay. So that's the... So Radio Milwaukee yeah. is the uh, umbrella... Umbrella company. ...of yeah. which there are different stations mm -hmm. embedded within. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. So you're currently the program director. Actually, that changed too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so... Breaking news. Breaking news. Uh, I haven't announced it. It's... Uh, um, a lot of changes. I am now director of digital for Radio Milwaukee, which includes Hyphen, Hyphen some digital products. So I'm still over in charge of Hyphen. Uh -huh. So we have a little restructuring. Show your Hyphen on. hat. Yeah, so that's how you spell it, H-Y-F-I-N. So we'll talk about Hyphen yeah. too. So a little restructuring. So that happened within the last two weeks. So. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and, and I'm gonna get out of the way and let you talk about Hyphen. Sure. I mean, Hyphen launched on Juneteenth of last year. We just celebrated a one-year anniversary a couple months ago. Uh, it's a new station under the Radio Milwaukee umbrella, sister station to 88.9. Uh, it's a format called Urban Alternative. It's spearheaded by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. They saw the need or a lack of public media not really um, bringing in diverse audiences to public media. So Urban Alternative, this format, is an attempt to try to change that. And so they launched this kind of a pilot project a few years ago. I was asked to be a, uh, kind of a part-time consultant along with Jordan Lee, who used to be the program director of 88.9. Uh, 
Uh, and so we helped consult on these stations. So the first cohort was like Denver, uh, Houston, and Norfolk. Okay. Um, so we helped them. Uh, and then Jordan at the time, was, it's kind of probably right before, right during the pandemic, I guess, decided why are we helping these other stations build this format in a city that probably needs it more than those other cities. So we applied for the grant, got the grant in uh, late 2021, and I kind of decided to recommit myself to Milwaukee and uh, put my hat to be program director of Hyphen. And so I went through the process of setting it up, doing interviews with the community, figure out what they're missing. I mean, Hyphen's goal is to really look at a city that has um, just de-invested in the black community here, yeah. um, especially young black community. So this is not only a, a music station, right? I consider it a, a media platform, a media movement, as we call it, to really kind of address trains through culture because I truly believe culture is what attracts and retains talent, not yeah. jobs. Um, and so what we wanted to do is highlight diverse black artists that don't get love on commercial radio. Local artists that don't get love on commercial radio. We want to support and highlight black businesses, black creatives, and black professionals uh, through events and stuff we do online and storytelling. And so yeah. that's what Hyphen is. Uh, and that's, you know, we're, just, we're just getting started. So you, you do do, or we're doing, I mean, I, things are changing so quickly. Um, there was a, a podcast you do with Kim Shine, uh, By Every Measure. Kim Shine and, and, and the historian Reggie Jackson. Okay. okay. So you it, so Reggie's on all of them? Yeah, Reggie was, okay. so we have two seasons of it. Yeah, I was good. the last one I think was in, was in March? Yeah, so, so that okay. was the second season. Okay, great. And the third season will be? Uh, we don't know yet. We're, okay, so, we're, so it's, it's and a, that'll be under Hyphen, or that'll be under Radio Milwaukee. We're Radio or? Milwaukee. So okay. Radio Milwaukee itself has its own digital, right? Which I'm head of. So it'll be Radio Milwaukee. Anything that's storytelling, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's Radio Milwaukee. So when you when you mention Reggie Jackson, and to all you guys out there, it's not Reggie Jackson, the baseball player. <laughs> it's not Reggie Jackson, the Denver uh, Denver Nuggets point guard. It's Reggie Jackson, who's a. Um, a consultant, a speaker, mm -hmm. well-known um, historian. historian about uh, uh, the the issues here in Milwaukee. Yeah, yep. um, I've heard him speak several times. He's brilliant. Um, it's a you know it's a great podcast. We'll look forward to that. Um, so um, then uh, you're a known foodie. I know you've you've done. Uh, Judge Mosley was talking about some of the work that you've guys together to bring mm -hmm. uh, different diverse groups together. Mm -hmm. And talk a little bit about that. Yeah, we've done, I mean, one thing I've done uh, with the Milwaukee film back in 2021, I think it's 21, I don't know, let's talk a time. Uh, we did a, I did a dinner where I brought together Jason Austin of Heaven's Table Barbecue, if you're mm -hmm. familiar with him. Sure. And uh, young man Alex, I, hate, I don't want to hate, I don't want to pronounce his last name, but he okay. runs Sap Sap, he's in the ocean. Okay. Uh, and um, we brought them together to, to do uh, kind of a cross-pollination of barbecue cultures. Really nice. Different. And the reason I did that, a few years earlier, we had a magazine here um, called Edible Milwaukee. I did a story on both those two called The Toots, I think it was a, a two, two Tales of Barbecue or something. I can't remember. Uh -huh. And I interviewed both of them right. about their barbecue culture. Nice. So that's how I got kind of knew them together. So that's one event I've done um, when it comes to food. I, I partnered with Derek Mosey on a soul food event uh -huh. that happened early this year, I think it was. Um, but yeah, like this bites and food to me is like it's, it's a chance to learn about other people's cultures. That's right. how I look at it. That's how he described it. Is that you you had to sit next. You didn't have to. You were um, sitting next to people who you didn't know. Mm -hmm. Who were uh, didn't look like you, yep. and you had conversation. So we call this series "Serious People with Serious Jobs Having a Little Fun." So we're gonna have a little fun today. So I'm gonna tell you a little story, but I'm gonna give you this to put on so you don't okay. get your your t-shirt. Put that on. So that's our apron. So um, <clears throat> I have to tell you that um, there's another podcast that you do called uh, "This Bites" yep. with Ann Christensen. Mm -hmm. And so Ann is the uh, food editor for the Milwaukee Magazine. And so one morning I'm listening, and you know, I'm not really 
paying attention, and all of a sudden I hear my name. <laughs> I'm like, I did what? <laughs> I, I said, you know, I'm, it's jarring to be basically an unknown human being and have your name talked about on the radio. Anne had written a story about yep. this series that we do. Uh, she uh, titled it Civic Gastronomy. But to hear, <laughs> to hear your, you being talked about uh, was just, it was just weird. <laughs> um, so I, they, you know, that I listened to that uh, podcast because it's about food. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it, I like to hear about food. <laughs> um, so what are we making today? It's a, there's no title to it. Uh, it's a dish that, you know, I like to cook fancy stuff, but sometimes my budget doesn't allow it, mm -hmm. right? So I always want to cook something. I have, like, back pocket, I'm going to say recipes, things I make that feel... Your go-tos. There's go-tos that are cheap, but it, right. it's kind of elevated. So yeah. this is a noodle dish, stir-fried noodle dish. I take, uh, you know, dry noodles, but I, I'm, I'm kind of picky about my instant noodles I use. I go, to, I go to Moe's Market. Are you familiar with Moe's Market? Yeah, sure. yeah. If you go to noodle section, it's like, oh, this is so great. So I get my noodles for there. I don't. I can't use the other noodles. So that's the one critique of this. So it's basically okay. a dish, stir-fried noodle dish that is kind of based on a, a kind of a different other recipes, uh, scallion noodles and, 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 and garlic noodles and all these kind of things, and I kind of just merged it together. Okay. So basically it's a bunch of... A lot of, lot of scallions, a lot of shallots that get fried in oil and let the oil flavor. Uh -huh. and you start adding like, you have in your kitchen ingredients, soy sauce, chili sauce, whatever. You make a sauce, toss some mushrooms, let them get softened in there. And then you toss the noodles, toss the sauce in there, throw some fresh vegetables in there, and then a little lime juice, and that's it. All right. And one of the things I know that you've been studying is uh, about sake. Yep. So I think... We might be tasting a little sake. So um, we'll be right back. We're gonna. We've got some prep work to do. We'll we'll get set up and then we'll we'll cook it and then we're gonna taste it. Yeah. Great. Cool. All right. We'll be right back. All right. So Tariq is getting started here. We put a little oil. Um, and so Tariq, take it away. So yeah. So we got the noodles cooking. The little instant noodles I got from Moe's Market on uh, the 25th and Clybourne. Okay. Great Asian market. You want to check it out? We've got a great noodle section. I'm, I'm really a, I'm really a kind of a snob when it comes to instant noodles, dry noodles. All right, so we're putting the mushrooms in. And we coat them a little, a little sesame oil as well. Okay. All right, so the noodles, um, Tariq is. Taking care of them over in the sink. Mm -hmm. They're drying them. Yep. They've cooked. And pull them off. You don't want to keep them cool. cooking. Right. So they're pulling them off, and they'll be reconstituted in with the sauce and the mushrooms. Yep. I'll do a little stirring here. I am supposed to be sous chefing, so and so obviously any kind of mushrooms. Do you prefer one type or another? I like shiitake, the, the texture wise, with okay. it, but. Whatever you have on hand, I mean, it's kind of like a budget dish sure. with little elevated flavors. You can add proteins you want, shrimp, chicken, steak. But today we're making, it's simple we're vegetarian. going vegetarian. Yep. You put a little sesame oil on the noodles. On the noodles. Over there, in the sink. Here, I'm helping. <laughs> The mushrooms, and then you're going to replace the mushrooms with the noodles. With the oil, cook the scallions, and oh, the aromatics. So make the make the uh, kind of the sauce. Flavor. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Okay. So we put a little more oil. If you're using canola oil, you can use any kind of vegetable mm -hmm. neutral, neutral oil. oil. Yeah. So we've got some. We got some shallots. 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 That's what you can say. Really, really. Some chopped garlic. About five cloves. So not only with this dish, when you finally chop it, sometimes garlic quickly burns, so they yeah. get bigger. It's really about the flavor, getting the oil. Mm -hmm. Scallions, green yep. onions, and we've got carrots at some point to come in. Yeah, near the end. Okay. So I like them still crispy for texture, I guess. Gotcha. So 
We got a little uh, fish sauce coming mm -hmm. on. Is it open? No. Should be. But how much do you think you're putting in there? Uh, you don't measure it, I don't either, so. Probably a half a teaspoon, maybe. Okay. A teaspoon. I use this a lot more than salt because it adds a little more flavor. This is just a little fish sauce. Mm. And Tom Darby, sorry we're not using her today, but she is she is here. Olive is present. A little bit of soy sauce. All right. Too much because we already have the salt. Right. Put that down and get a little more flavors. Yeah, started and you're starting to get a little color there, a little brown color. All right, the mushrooms back in, the ones we just cooked. Yep. Continuing to just build flavors, build a base. So show me your, your secret ingredient. So nage sauce. Mm -hmm. and you have a, have you ever had eel and sushi? Uh huh. This is the sauce they use. Nice. It does have eel in here, so it's not completely vegetarian, pescatarian, I guess you say. Just a little for sweetness, and okay. thickness. And then cheat a little ginger garlic paste. Here. Let me get up here. Ginger garlic paste. Okay. Good. Once this is tossed, then we can put okay. the carrots in. Okay. The carrots will be a different texture. Yep. Okay. All right, so we're putting our noodles in from Moe's. Get the tongs. All right, so you're going to, like a good Italian, finish your noodles in the sauce. You know, this is not an Italian dish, and Tariq's not Italian. <laughs> you can be an honorary Italian if you do this. Put the carrots in now. We're pretty much done. All right, and so in the cilantro, with the garnish, I put that on now, or you put, wait till we serve it. Put a little bit more here, and then when we serve it, great. Okay. All right, so we're gonna finish up here. We're gonna walk back over to the table, and then we're going to give it a taste. Yep. And I think we're gonna have a little sake with it. All right, here we are. Um, Trick, why don't you give us a Tell us what we got here. So it's a noodle, stir-fried noodle dish. St uh, stir-fried in a scallops, shallots, garlic, soy sauce, fish sauce, mushrooms, a little bit of unagi sauce. And you stir fry, mix it together. And it's just a simple little cheap, playful dish. Yum. All right, so. Great late um, night snack too. So do we have our sake with? After, before, you can have it with. All right, let's have it with. Just to this is a strong just because. sake because I did had to go. I because you asked to bring a sake and I forgot the sake I had at home, which would probably been better. But this one I got. I show it to the camera. It's uh, it's, it's from the Netherlands. It's Dutch. It's a nogori style sake, which nogori means uh, uh, some of the rice sediment is left in the, in the sake. Okay. But this is purely barrel, double barreled Nagori sake. Nice. Um, Served chilled. And uh, it's most sake ranges in between the alcohol content of uh, like 11 to 15%. Okay. This one is uh, double that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is technically in Japan would not be legally considered sake. It would be, sake is up to a certain point. It's up to a certain point. I think okay. it's 18% maybe, I can't remember it is. But technically, in Japan, this would not be classified as sake. But right. this is not in Japan, made in Japan. Of course, a couple glasses and we'll, we'll have to try it. This smells really good, Treek. This is just rip the rip. Ah, there we go, all right. So, got a couple glasses here. Traditional Japanese sake glasses. Or this, is, this is a gift to you, by the way. Well, thank you, Tariq. I appreciate that. A little bit. That's twenty-four percent. So. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> well, Woo! Smells strong. Well, 
I mean, it's... So we say Kanpai. Kanpai. Oh, that's the restaurant over here. Yeah, Japanese for cheers. It's, oh, yeah. Kanpai. Woo! It's not as bad as the second time I had it. It's a lot smoother. I definitely taste the uh, alcohol content in there. This is a lot better. The first time I had it, it tasted different. Mm. It's good. I mean, I, I think I've had sake twice in my life, and I can't really? remember the last time. So, yeah, let's All right, let's. I'm going to use my chopsticks. Well, I guess I should use my chopsticks too now. Well, let me know. Mm. Well, not one flavor doesn't stand out over another. Which is good, but there's not, it's not overpowering fish sauce, it's not overpowering mm -hmm. sesame, it's not overpowering um, soy sauce, it just kind of all melts together. Mm -hmm. mm. Delicious. Cook the noodles just enough so they won't get too soggy. Mm. But if you want to add more, you can, that's the nice thing about it. And then there, there's this little teeny kick of lime mm -hmm. that that kind of comes through there. Yeah, oh, come by, come by. Oh, wow, well, Tariq, thank you so much for coming out today. Thank you, appreciate it so mm -hmm. much. Um, if you have a chance, since it's digital, check out uh, eighty-eight nine or Radio Milwaukee hyphen. Thank show you. us your hat again. Hyphen has an app too. I have to download the hyphen app. Nope. The hyphen, hyphen. 88.9, and what was the other one? Uh, 414 Music. 414 Music. 414, and you can listen to all of those on the Radio Milwaukee app. Gotcha. It's um, 414, obviously, is the uh, area code for here in Milwaukee. Yeah, all local music. And this is, this is, I love doing this. this is, my wife was in here earlier. She says she loves the interviews. I said, I like the interviews. Okay, well, I love eating this stuff. So this is, you know, it's, Guy comes in, or a person comes in, just makes a wonderful meal, and I get to eat it. <laughs> so I'm happy. Mm. Well, I won't inflict my table manners on anybody. <laughs> so, appreciate everyone watching. This is Cooking with Milwaukee Community Leaders. We're off for a week, heading to D.C. for a family reunion. Mm. Um, we'll be back in a couple weeks. And, uh, more shows with more people like Tariq, who are trying to uh, make our city a better place, trying to affect some change, and we do appreciate it. Your work you. is, is uh, greatly appreciated throughout. Appreciate so, having me. I, well, I appreciate you coming. I appreciate you explaining about you know hyphen and, and what you do, mm -hmm. but I really appreciate you know, <laughs> this meal that we made. So, um, as always, please like and subscribe. Um, check out all of our other videos on Cooking with Community Leaders. Kampai. Kampai. And thanks for watching.